Hi, good morning, everyone. I am Chun Lim from Neurosurgery Department, Penang General Hospital. First of all, I would like to thank the organizing committee for inviting me to talk in this webinar. Today, I would like to share on the topic of mild traumatic brain injury, a neurosurgeon's perspective. Epidemiology of TBI, blunt trauma makes up of 96% of all injuries, motor vehicle accident accounted 75% of cases, and out of that, 85% have injuries to the head. Mild TBI comprises of 70 to 90% of all hospital treated cases. A large amount are not treated in the hospital emergency department. So the actual rate is excess of 600 per 100,000 cases. WHO systemic review shows the consequences from mild TBI does affect economic and social costs and indirect costs such as sick leave and loss of productivity. Head injury is defined as blunt or penetrating injury to the head due to external force with temporary or permanent impairment in brain function, which may or may not result in underlying structural changes in the brain. The term concussion and mild head injury are often used interchangeably in practice. However, there are differences in the meaning for these terms, which I will explain later on in my slide. So to define head injury, one or more of the following conditions from mechanism, physiological, and plus minus anatomical must be present in patient with mild head injury. Mechanism are presence of external forces, for example, head being struck by an object, brain undergoing acceleration or deceleration movement without direct external trauma to the head, foreign body penetrating the brain, or forces generated from the blast or explosion. Physiology are alteration of um, physiology of the brain, such as reduced level of consciousness. It can be self-reported or observed. Any memory loss or amnesia, which can be immediately before or after the trauma. Any neuropsychological abnormality, such as confusion, disorientation, or slow in thinking. Any neurological deficit, such as weakness, paresis, or plagia. Any sensory loss any dis di disturbance in vision, any aphasia, which can be transient or non-transient. Anatomical are scalp face or skull involvement or brain injury itself, which it can be internal or external. Skull fracture such as facial, uh, base of skull fracture or box fracture. And X for uh, internal, it can be intracranial lesion or any brain parenchymal injury or injury to the dura metal. So why do we need to classify head injury? Classification based on severity is for triage. Plan of management, as we know, different category of head injury have different management, prognosis of outcome, and morphology of injury. Morphology of injury, which can be divided into primary brain injury, which is immediate brain damage caused upon impact, which includes concussion, diffuse injury, focal intracranial hematoma, penetrating injuries, and this cannot be altered or prevented. Secondary brain injury are any injury which augments the effect of primary brain injury, and it can be divided into extracranial, such as hypoxia, hypotension, hypoglycemia, and acidosis, intracranial such as seizures, clot expansion, brain edema, hydrocephalus, and intracranial infection itself. Clinical presentation is based on level of consciousness. Classical coma scale is divided into three main categories that is mild, moderate, and severe. However, they added minimal head injury and critical head injury into this classification. Minimal head injury is almost similar as concussion. However, concussion is further divided into another three categories, which I will explain later on my slide. So minimal head injury is a GCS of 15, no loss of consciousness and no neurological deficit. Whereas mild head injury is GCS of 14 to 15, 
with presence of loss of consciousness less than five minutes. Moderate head injury is GCS of 9 to 13 with loss of consciousness more than five minutes and presence of focal neurological deficit. Severe head injury is GCS of 5 to 8 and critical head injury is GCS of 3 to 4. So I would like to highlight on minimal head injury, which there are some um, classification. Um, classification based on classical comma skill, um, GCS of 13 is classified under moderate, whereas ATLS has modified this GCS scoring to, uh, to put GCS of 13 as mild traumatic brain injury. So here I have a paper of evidence-based medicine which shows, which compare the classic model and the modified model and the effect on the, of this modification on mortality prediction. So in conclusion, the classic model, which is GCS of 13, is classified, is better classified under moderate TBI rather than mild TBI. So Glasgow Comma Scale was introduced in 1975 by Jeanette and Tisdale. It is most commonly used scale for assessment of conscious level in a patient. Predictive of outcome is important prognostic factor, is reliable and reproducible. So as we know, classical comma skill have three components, that is I, verbal, and motor. As for motor, um, M1 makes no movement, M2 is decerebrate posture, M3 is decorticate posture, M4 is withdrawal to pain stimuli, M5 is localizes painful stimuli, and M6 is obey commands. This motor component is important for us as neurosurgeon. Um, for which it is important for us to assess properly based on the Glasgow comma skill as we as M3 and above, at least M3 and above is an important um, prognostic factor and also outcome. As for pediatric age group less than four years old, we use we use pediatric comma skill. They, um, it is divided into three components that is I, verbal and motor. The differences between this and our adult comma skill is the component of verbal. M5 is the child can smile, orientate to sound and follow objects and interact. M4, based on two components, interaction of a child and crying. Whereas the rest of the component are the same as our adult GCS scoring. So now we move on to the types of brain injury is further divided into occurrence where there is primary or secondary head injury, mechanism of injury, uh, if it's um, closed injury or open injury, such as penetrating um, head injury, and um, morphology of the injury, whether is it uh, focal injury such as skull fracture, focal intracranial hematoma, or diffuse injury such as concussion or diffuse external injury better known as DAI. So DAI is a rapid acceleration and deceleration of the head causing by shearing of axons. It is also a consequences of child abuse, for example, particularly in shaken baby syndrome and also cases of abusive head trauma. DAI can be, grading can be divided into three grades based on clinically and also pathologically. So grade one, is the one that I would like to highlight here. It's actually under mild TBI. It, um, patient will have brief loss of consciousness and on pathology-wise, there will be external damage of white matter and gray white matter interfaces. As for grade two, there'll be hemorrhages on the corpus callosum and grade three, there'll be hemorrhages on the brain stem. As uh, clinically, patient will be in comatose state. So that's another grading of uh, diffuse injury, which is subdivided into four categories by Marshall, which they compare the CT scan findings and also the mortality. So as for grade one, it's also a mild TBI with a normal CT scan and a mortality of 9.6%. So grade two and grade three, we have a midline shift of less than 5 mm, whereas grade four is a midline shift of more than 5 mm with the highest mortality of 
So we move on to another type of mild TBI, that is skull fracture, depressed skull fracture or open skull fracture. Depressed skull fracture, when we say it's a surgical um, lesion, indication for surgical intervention, or when there's involvement of more than two table thickness. What does it mean by more than two table thickness is when there's involvement of outer table and inner table. So as we can see um, on the diagram here, as a CT scan, we can see a depressed skull fracture of both tables um, of the right temporal bone um, with um, involvement of a depressed fracture with um, dural tear and causing intracranial hemorrhage. And sometimes there can be presence of pneumocranium. So as we can see, level two evidence, sorry, level three evidence, if skull fracture is present, the probability of intracranial hemorrhage is 4.9 times higher than those without skull fracture. So compound skull fracture will be open wound with palpable fracture, open fracture with scalp or bone loss, or um, open fracture with herniation of brain matter and skull fracture with evidence of persistent CSF leak, such as base of skull fracture. And we can see that in patient with uh, presence of CSF rhinorrhea, CSF autoria, and patient can have raccoon eyes, periorbital hematoma, or battle signs that is a mastoid discoloration, uh, sorry, bluish discoloration of the mastoid. So here we can see that skull fracture can only be ruled out by radiographic imaging, either by skull x-ray or the most definite by CT brain. As we can see here, the clinical assessment of skull fracture, um, clinically, skull fracture and scalp wound, um, the sensitivity and specificity is low. So we move on to the definition of cerebral concussion. It's a sudden transient mechanical head injury with destruction of neuronal activity. The GCS will be 15. Without um, uh, a brief loss of consciousness, that can be up to three minutes. There's no CT scan findings on imaging. It is a subset of mild traumatic brain injury. So concussion is actually not equivalent to mild TBI. Concussion can occur without direct trauma to the head. For example, acceleration or deceleration movements. So here, concussion is divided into three grades that is mild, moderate, and severe. And there are <clears throat> several classifications for concussion based on Colorado grading, AAN, that is the American Academy of Neurology, and also Cantu grading. So for this, I would like to highlight on AAN, which is actually, um, we follow the, um, based on our CPG guidelines, um, grade one uh, and grade two, mild and moderate, there's no loss of consciousness, whereas for grade three, there's presence of uh, loss of consciousness. The difference between grade one and grade two is the post-concussion symptoms. Grade one, you will have less than 15 minutes. Grade two, you will have more than 15 minutes. So now we move on to mild traumatic brain injury. It is defined as acute brain injury resulting from mechanical energy to the head from external forces. GCS is 14 to 15. It can be with or without imaging evidence on, of brain injury, loss of consciousness less than 30 minutes, and post-traumatic amnesia less than 24 hours. It can be subdivided according to the risk of deterioration and expected outcome. So the risk can be divided into low risk, medium risk, and high risk. Low risk are GCS 15 with presence of uh, loss of consciousness and amnesia and raised ICP symptoms. Medium risk are GCS 14 to 15 and high risk are GCS 13 to 14. These both has presence of neurological deficit or skull fracture and they have risk factor and risk factors such as coagulopathy, any alcohol consumption or any drug use, age more than 65 years old, any previous cranial surgery or any history of pre-trauma epilepsy. Consequences of mild TBI, it can be immediate from one to two weeks or long-term effects from three to six months. Patient may, patient may experience 
persisting symptoms of post-concussive symptoms. It may result in neuropathological changes, but largely it affects functional disturbances rather than structural injury. So post-concussion symptoms, it can be divided into physical, physical that is patient will experience headache, dizziness, or any raised ICP symptoms, or maybe feeling tired um, and lethargy. Also, it will affect cognition or memory. Patient will have difficulty thinking, trouble concentrating, short-term memory impairment, and difficulty remembering new information. It can also affect emotion, irritability, depressed, or anxiety. It can also affect the sleep disturbances, interruption in normal sleep pattern. So when we see, when we review a mild TBI patient in our neurosurgery clinic, and if they have any symptoms of cognition, emotion, or sleep disturbances, we will refer them to the neuropsychiatric. So when is imaging indicated? We have a few guidelines. Uh, one of it is Canadian City Head Rule, which is divided into high risk and medium risk. And these are indicated for CT scan for patients with mild TBI. High risk group are of GCS score of less than 15 at two hours of injury. Any suspected open or skull, base of skull, uh, sorry, depressed skull fracture, and any signs of base of skull fracture, such as hemotympanium and any CSF autoria or rhinorrhea, um, any battle sign or any raccoon eye. Vomiting episodes of more than two episodes, age of more than 65 years old. Medium risk are amnesia more than 30 minutes or any dangerous mechanism such as if the pedestrian is struck by a, a motor vehicle accident, if the occupant is ejected from the motor vehicle, or any heart fall from a height from an elevation of more than three feet or more than five stairs. So these exclusion criteria are if his patient is on any usage of antiplatelets or anticoagulants, any pre-existing bleeding disorder, any penetrating skull injury, or acute focal neurological deficits, or any major trauma with unstable vital signs. We have another criteria. There is a New Orleans criteria for minor head injury requiring CT scan. So the symptoms here will be headache, vomiting, age more than 60 years old, drug or alcohol intoxication, deficit in short-term memory, any physical evidence of trauma above clavicle, and presence of seizure. So as we can see here, the sensitivity and specificity is lesser um, as compared to our city Canadian head rule. So that's why uh, in our CPG guidelines, we use Canadian city head rule to guide us for which case uh, indicated for CT brain imaging. Patient with mild TBI who is on anticoagulant or antiplatelet, despite a GCS of 15, they will have a positive CT scan of 29%, uh, and this is a level 2 evidence. So any loss of consciousness is a predictor of positive CT scan, and therefore, head CT scan should be done in all cases. So as for uh, pediatric age group, we have a, um, we have a, 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 in the rules that we can use, pecan rules, for age less than 2 years old, it can be divided into high risk of high risk, intermediate risk, and low risk. As for high risk, the GCS is 14 with a palpable skull fracture and altered mental status. And this CT scan is warranted. As for intermediate risk, patient can have scalp hematoma, loss of consciousness more than five seconds, any severe mechanism of injury. As for this, um, it can be a sharing decision making, whether is it an observational or uh, to proceed with CT scan. And for child more than two years old, uh, we follow the rule uh, of PICON also, which we have uh, divided into high risk, intermediate risk, and low risk. So as for high risk is of GCS 14, signs of um, base of skull fracture and uh, altered mental status. And CT scan is indicated for cases like that. Intermediate risk with presence of loss of consciousness and also severe mechanism of injury and also raised ICP symptoms. 
for this kind of uh, cases, it can be a sharing decision making where we can um, see based on severity of the patient, we can either uh, choose to, we can either observe or we proceed for CT imaging. So when do we do um, CT cycle for patients with mild TBI? We follow the rule of Canadian CT spine rule. So Canadian CT spine rule, they have high risk factor, which is age more than 65 years old, any dangerous mechanism or paraesthesia in the extremities. So for, um, we also, if we assess the patient, um, if a low risk factor, whether if patient um, can be in sitting position in emergency department, uh, whether patient is ambulatory, there's any delayed onset of the neck pain, or whether there's absence of the midline spinal spine tenderness. And if there's none of those, we will, uh, we will assess if the patient is uh, able to actively rotate the neck 45 degrees left and right. So if any presence of that, um, we will have to proceed with CT uh, cervical spine. There is another um, guidelines called NEXUS, which is known as National Emergency X-Radiography Utilization Study. Uh, the criteria are any posterior midline cervical tenderness, no evidence of intoxication, any level, uh, a normal level of alertness, any focal neurological deficit, any painful distracting injury. So if presence of um, any presence of uh, this indicated CT, uh, CT spine, CT cervical imaging. So we move on to assessment of patient. Basically, history is very important because we need to know how is the mechanism of trauma. Then we follow up with our A, B, C, D, and E. A is for our airway and not to forget our cervical spine protection. B is for our breathing, which should avoid hypoxic damage. C is for circulation, so we should avoid hypertension. D is for our disorder of neurology, which is GCS scoring. GCS scoring, it can also be influenced by alcohol intoxication, sedative, hypoxia, and also hypertension. So we should bear in mind that assessment of GCS should be done after we resuscitate the patient or if, let's say, patient recovered from intoxication of alcohol, or if, let's say, patient is um, sedated. So we do assess the patient pupils. We see the size, whether is it symmetry, and whether it is re reactive or non-reactive. We assess the limb, whether patient is moving all the limbs, and whether patient complain of any raised intracranial pressure symptoms. And also, not to forget any extracranial injuries such as intra-abdominal injuries, pelvic or long bone uh, injuries. So here's a flow chart of um, uh, any mild TBI cases, uh, initial GCS of 14 to 15 and following a blunt trauma. So we stabilize the patient and we follow the A, B, C, D, E. And subsequently, we assess the risk of the patient, whether is it low risk or high risk. And subsequently, we will know whether um, we should do a CT imaging um, urgent or uh, followed by also CT cervical spine and how um, and how um, closely we should monitor the GCS charting. So high risk of mild TBI are any clinical suspicion of skull fracture, any post-traumatic seizures, age of more than 65 years old, elderly patients have increased risk of intracranial injury, whether patients have any polytrauma, uh, patients are in any dangerous mechanism such as fall from a flight of height, uh, whether patient is a pedestrian, pedestrian or cyclist hit by a vehicle. So, of course, also not to forget whether patient has drug or any alcohol intoxication which can alter the mental status. Patient has any known neurosurgery or neurological impairment. Patient has any delayed presentation or uh, whether if we want to discharge a patient home, observation of a GCS spoon, CT scan is normal and the clinical signs have improved. So we move to management. Patient with mild head injury in which CT scan is not indicated, however, should be observed at least a minimum of six hours in emergency department. GCS 15 on arrival and two hours later, no neurological deficit, age less than 65 years old, Patient is not on any anticoagulant or antiplatelet, no history of coagulopathy, no multiple injuries, and patient is not 
on any drugs um, or any alcohol uh, intoxication. So for mild head injury, uh, ranging GCS from 14 to 15, normally what we do is we will admit the patient to the ward with close observation, half hourly for two hours and hourly subsequently. We should clear the cervical spine. If early scan was done, we can consider repeat CT brain after six hours from the time of onset to the time of the first CT scan done. And if, let's say, the GCS worsen or deteriorate, we should consider a repeat CT scan. Ensure adequate ventilation, adequate analgesia, anti-epileptic to review the patient at 24 hours post-trauma and we can consider to discharge the patient if the patient is well, GCS is uh, full and there's no raised intracranial pressure. So upon discharge, we will advise patient of a uh, head in head advice, head injury advice, which is if, um, if any raised ICP symptoms to uh, immediately come to the nearest hospital. So we will review the patient uh, in neurosurgical clinic at two to four weeks. Here are some of uh, examples of imaging of mild traumatic brain injury. So mild traumatic brain injury is actually a um, um, clinical diagnosis. However, they can have positive CT scan findings. So here are some of the examples which um, over the uh, right side is a uh, patient have a thin uh, extradural hemorrhage over the right temporal region. And as for the left side is a chronic subdural hemorrhage with mixed density and also presence of mouth uh, septation over the uh, chronic subdural. Um, as for this, patient will have uh, this S of uh, ranging of 14 to 15, however, has uh, contralateral weakness. As for this picture on the right, <clears throat> patient have a um, left frontal contusion and this we will uh, admit the patient and repeat the scan 24 hours after trauma to monitor if there's any clock expansion. Um, on the left will be a uh, imaging of a traumatic subarachnoid hemorrhage. Um, as for this kind of cases, if there's any subarachnoid hemorrhage over the sylvian fissure, um, over the right on left or with uh, there's any subarachnoid hemorrhage over the circle of bilis, we have to rule out aneurysm rupture, which we should um, subject the patient to CT angiography or more specifically, uh, several angiography. So another type is cook and counter cook contusion. Contusion that are both at the site of impact and on the opposite side. Cook are direct skull impact and counter cook are opposite side of impact. So the brain moved within the skull and striking at least two points and it is due to negative pressure forces causing both vascular and tissue damage. As you can see on the CT scan here, over the uh, right frontal contusion is our counter -coup, and coup is our subgalial hematoma over the left side. So um, when we have uh, mild TBI uh, cases with positive uh, CT scan findings, if the clot expanded, um, as for example, EDH, if the clot extend, expanded to this, um, when do we consider it as surgical lesion? It is when EDH of thickness 1.5 cm, regardless of GCS score and midline shift of more than 5 mm, and the clot volume is more than 30 mL. As for subdural hemorrhage, the thickness will be more than 1 cm, midline shift more than 5 mm and compression of basal system. So for several contusion, when do we consider surgical lesion is when contusion volume more than 30 mL, midline shift more than 5 mm or as presence of ventricular dilatation. Where, what, where, um, what consists of mass effect when we say presence of mass effect on the scan, which means there's midline shift more than 5 mm Effacement of the basal system and compression of the ipsilateral ventricle. And this correlates with the outcome of the patient. So basal system, um, and why is it important? So basal system, when we scroll down to the scan, we look, we find at the level of mid-brain, um, and we can see there's a smiley face here. So this um, basal system 
the smiley face, if it's, we can see it clearly, we call it uh, all the limbs are open, so the basal system are open. If it's considered partially um, compressed or obliterated, it's when involvement of one or two limbs of it completely obliterated or closed is when all, all of the limbs are obliterated. So um, the importance of basal system is there's a threefold risk of raised intracranial pressure and the status of it is related to the outcome. How do we measure midline shift? Midline shift at a level, we scroll down to the level of the third ventricle and that is where our foramen of Mondro, we use, um, we measure A, which is the intracranial space, the width of the intracranial space and B, is the distance between the septum pallidum um, to the bone. So we take the measuring of A divided by 2 minus B. So mass effect is the volume calculation of A, the height and the width A that, uh, times B times C. C is the number of slices on 10 mm cut or height and divided by 2. So prognostic factor of TBI are age more than 65 years old. GCS scoring on emission, pupillary size and symmetry, any episodes of hypotension on emission, radiological features such as presence of midline shift more than 5 mm, and effacement of basal system. So take-home message for this is several concussion is when there is physiological dysfunction without anatomical or radiological abnormality. So mild TBI is a clinical diagnosis based on Glasgow comma scale for assessment of conscious level of patient. Post-concussion symptoms involve physical, cognitive, and emotion, and it can last up to three to six months. Canadian CT head rule is used for indication of CT scan in patients suspected with mild TBI. That's the end of my lecture, and with that, I thank you for your attention.